Ayan, good morning, good morning, good morning. Welcome to my live for my ITC 100. So I hope you are doing well. To my students, say present once you are in. Good morning, good morning, salahat. So, I hope everyone attended the uh, general orientation, not the general, but the virtual orientation of, of the Institute of Computing, Kahapon. So, ito, it's Friday in the morning and I have a great news. Wala muna tayong chapter quiz this Friday kasi... Uh, tatapusin muna natin tong chapter 2, okay? Ayan. So, uh, we will reschedule that one uh, this Monday. No? So, again, please review the uh, learning materials that I uploaded on the canvas. And on Monday, we will have our chapter quiz. Yeah. Magandang balita ba siya o hindi? Ha? <laughs> Oops. <laughs> ah, hindi pala kayo tumatawa. <laughs> so, anyways. So, this Monday, we, again, we'll have our chapter quiz. Now, uh, ang question, isasali ko ba tong chapter 2 o hindi? Patay! So, yeah. Hindi, hindi ko isasali ito yung chapter to Pero pwede na rin, no? So, we will uh, see na lang sa Monday. So, again, the chapter quiz will be the introduction and the chapter 1. Okay? Yan, so, marami na rin uh, nakapasok. So, um, ano pa? Um, yeah, again, I told you to uh, listen carefully sa uh, uh, orientation kahapon. Uh, maybe I will be including that one. I'll be including uh, on, uh, the qu chapter quiz, no, your orientation. So I'm not so sure if you really attended the orientation yesterday because at the start, of course, ang dami nyo. <laughs> dami nag -attendance. Pero in the end, there were only 27 no, sa aking live. Doon nag-live sa Facebook. Pero at least, swerte yung nagpatuloy tumingin sa live ko kasi nakatanggap ng load si dalawa yun eh. Dalawang student yun. Oh, sa yung copy ko ay sinulat ko yun. Right now. Di ko alam if that was your classmate. Ayan, si Mr. Gerald Pagulong and Angeli Flores na nalo ng 50,000 load. 50,000 load talaga ito. So, if Jerry... And dito ba siya, no? Si Gerald Pagulog. Ah, wala. And si Flores. Ah, Anjali. Dito si Anjali. Anjali. PM mo yung sa akin yung ano mo, ha? Ah, uh, any Globe or Smart na mobile number so that I could send you the 50,000 load. And congratulations kahapon sa... Uh, Wheel of Names. <laughs> Wheel of Names, man. Bakit ano man? Five, dapat F4. Uh, so, again, congratulations, Miss Angeli Flores, for winning the Wheel of Names yesterday. <laughs> yeah, okay lang. So, wala naka, ano ba? Sa, nakatapos. So, at least yung nag-asali sa Zoom kasi like si Jessa, he, uh, she was your first year mayor, no? So pag may concern kayo sa activities sa ACES or sa mga students, uh, you may contact Ms. Uh, Jessa May Bernadette, okay? So siya yung mayor ninyo. So once again, congratulations, Angelie Flores. <laughs> Saibong 50,000 loads. Yeah. 
So, dili na ito ito tayo, no? So, if you have question, just, ano na, PM sa comment, so, uh, we will not, uh, not, we will not, but, uh, we will continue again the lecture, no? And again, uh, this is a pre-recording uh, lecture uh, I with uh, by Miss Lani Laureano. So I hope kayo lalan nyo na si Miss Lani Laureano, no? So hindi ko mala sasabihin so that pagdating ko sa quiz this Monday, may sagot na kayo. Okay? And please review na lang, review, review yung um, chapter quiz. Uh, I mean, they review the orientation, no? Okay, sali nga siya sa chapter 3 is next Monday or this coming Monday next week. Okay, so hindi ko na patatagalin pa. Um, uh, let's continue the uh, our topic with the uh, entitled uh, from chapter 2, the system unit processing and memory part 2. So I hope you remember Hindi lang kayo nanood, no, yung sa live last Wednesday, but you also review it. Because sometimes magkakaroon kayo ng quiz without, uh, ano din eh, sending the learning materials. Kaya, review, review po tayo. Kaya nga, ito, ginagawa kong live so that it will be recorded automatically. Okay? So, an eight, until 8.15 yung attendance, hapol kayo. I will start now the um, the pre-recorded. Ayun. Bakit niyo makita? Ay, so FB frames meron pa it i uh, even ano until 11:59 this morning kasi i thought kahapon 16 pala kahapon no my mistakes i thought it was 15 so normally ako kasi i uh, made the FB frame on 14 then 15 ang nalagay ko na schedule dapat 16 pala but I extended it till this noon at 11.59 a.m. No? So you can submit pa din. Okay? So, again, please prepare your pen and paper. Because after this, meron a uh, short quiz. I mean, yung activity without natin. Then, talagang, hihintayin ko siya para hindi maglabas yung sagot. Okay? So, let's start, everyone. And... Please listen, listen carefully. Now, we are done with the first part. Now, let's go to the next um, session, which is inside the system unit. So, the system unit is mystically um, most of the people call it as CPU. Okay. Pero... For us, especially for you as BSID students, you should know na yung box na yun ay hindi yan ang CPU. That is called the system unit or called the system box. So what is inside the system box? So this is the main case of a computer. So yung box is the main case of a computer. So this houses the processing hardware for a computer. And it also contains storage devices, the power supply, and the cooling fans. Also, it has a processor, memory, interfaces to connect to peripheral devices such as printer and the other components. And with the desktop computer, usually looks like a rectangular box. So, ito siya. Ito siya. So, this is rectangular size. Pag desktop siya. And then, we have here the different... Uh, peripherals that are seen in the uh, system box or the system unit. So we have here the expansion cards. We have here the expansion slots. We have here our motherboard, this one. And then this is our memory, the ROM. And then we have here the memory slots. 
here. And then we have here the power supply. We have here the fan. We have here our hard drive. These are the drive base. This is for our DVD. This is for flash memory card reader. And this is our USB ports for connection of USB devices. So now let's go to discussing one by one of those peripherals. Let's first discuss about the motherboard. The motherboard is um, having this um, electronic peripherals also. We have here the computer chips, very small pieces of silicon or other semiconducting material onto which integrated circuits are embedded. A circuit board is a thin board containing computer chips and other electronic components. And this has also the system board, which is the main circuit board inside the system unit to which all devices must connect. So, a motherboard, tinatawag siya na mother kasi connected sa kanya lahat. Okay, so the system board acts as the main circuit board which other units, which other devices in your system is connected to that board. Okay, so we have here the external devices, monitors, keyboards, our mouse, the printers, then the wireless devices, we have the Bluetooth. The power supply is used to connect to the motherboard to deliver electricity. So pag walang power supply, walang electricity na ma send doon sa ating motherboard. Portable computers are rechargeable battery pack. So, non-removable batteries, more difficult and more expensive to replace. So, yung mga laptops, meron tayong rechargeable battery pack. But, meron mga laptops na nandun talaga yung batteries that are non-removable. So, these are more expensive to replace. So, we have the drive base. The drive base are rectangular metal rocks inside the system unit that house storage devices. Ito yun siya. Balikan natin. Okay, ito yun. Drive base. Hold storage devices such as DVD and hard drives. Okay, hard drive, C CD, DVD drive, flash memory card reader. Connected to the motherboard with a cable. Processors is our central processing unit naman. So, ang processor, gamay lang na siya. It's very small. It's circuitry and components packaged together and connected directly to the motherboard. So, it is connected directly to the motherboard. That's the vast majority of processing for a computer. And also, called a processor, called a microprocessor when talking about personal computers. Okay, so with CPU, okay, we have the terms dual core, quad core. So what does it mean? Ano pala ang ibig sabihin pag sinasabi? Ano yung ano mo, CPU mo, dual core? Yung ganun? So it means that it contains processing components of two separate processors on a single CPU. So it means that it can perform more work on a computer that you're using. So, for example, um, you are opening a browser and then you're having a movie or nagpa-play ka pa ng music. So, there are multiple tasks in your computer. So, for it to be more faster, para mas paspas siya, you need to have multiple processors. So, pag dual core, two separate processors on single CPU. Pag quad core siya, contains four cores. So, ano mas, ma mas mabilis? Four or two? So, mas mabilis yung quad core. Multi-core processors allows you to work on more than one task at a time. So, muna, pag mapilit ng computer ninyo, yeah, ang inyong CPU is um, mas baba siya, not your tendency that it will really have logs in your work. 
So typically, different CPUs for desktop computers, portable computers, servers, mobile de devices, or consumer devices are there. So personal computer CPU often are made of Intel or AMD. So nakadong naman mo ano? Intel Quad Core or Intel Core i7, 10th Gen, ganun. So, media tablets and phone, mobile phones use processors made by other companies such as ARM. Okay. So, these are the examples of computer um, CPUs. Okay. So, for desktop, we have Intel Core i7, 3rd Gen. Meron na ngayon, 10th Gen. So, it has this name and we have the number of cores. So, mataas-taas na siya. Pag server talaga, mas mataas compared sa desktop. Kasi yung server, it uh, it processes request from other desktop computers. That's why it's called a server. So, meron siyang client na gina, gina serve. And then, we have the desktop. The desktop Intel Core i7 3rd Gen. Now, we have Intel Core i7 10th Gen na. So, it has 4 to 6 and 4 to 8 number of cores and this is the clock speed. Uh, mamaya konti, we will discuss about the clock speed. And then, the mobile notebooks, ito naman sa kanya. And then, the mobile devices, this is the ARM. Okay. You have also known or heard about NVIDIA. Okay. NVIDIA is a GPU or a graphics processing unit which is separated from our CPU. So, it takes oppressing uh, the displaying of images, including still images and animations on screen. So, you mga gamers dyan, uh, you know about this. Okay? It can be located on the motherboard, on a gra video graphics board, on in the CPU package. So, ito siya. Okay, so, um, it is more of uh, yung mga gumagamit talaga ng mga um, anime, animations, uh, GPU is really important in this. So, here is an example of how it works. So, this one, kumagawa sila ng mga 3D animations um, for it to be real-time, mas mabilis yung paggawa ng mga 3D animations. Gumamit sila ng GPU. Okay, ito yung mga specifications. Okay. So, ang dami, di ba? 14 huge screens, 34 projectors. So, that motions can be synchronized with the actions in 3D at Universal Studios. Okay. So, now let's go to the processing speed. Processing speed is the measure of how the CPU process our um, instructions. So, CPU clock speed is one measurement of processing speed. It is uh, rated in megahertz or gigahertz. Okay, the higher the CPU clock speed, the more the instructions process per second. So, um, there is also an alternative measure of processing speed. It's in the number of instructions in megaflops, gigaflops, or teraflops. Benchmark test can be used to evaluate overall processing speed of your computer. So, the processing speed is in terms of megahertz or gigahertz. That's why um, we have um, questions on uh, how many gigahertz does your CPU... Uh, what is the gigahertz measurement of your CPU? So, that's, that's it. So, the word size is the amount of data that a CPU can manipulate one at a time. Typically, it is 32 or 64 bits. So, di ba, meron tayong tinatawag na same mohang uh, operating system for 32 bits or 62, 64 bits. Most of the higher-end computer today, especially on uh, the Core i7 10th gen or more than that, they are in 64 bits na. So, cache memory. What is a cache memory? It's a special group of very fast memory chips located on or close to the CPU. So, what does it do? Yung mga always mo ginagamit or always mo ginagamit na mga data or 
softwares or instructions, it will be stored in the cache memory so that when you need it again, um, dalit lang siya makita dito sa cache memory. So, um, consider the cache memory as if you're in the library, kukuha ka ng libro. Yung mga books, uh, yung mga cabinets, yun yung memory mo. Ang cache memory mo is yung desk. In the desk, kukunin mo yung mga books na gustong-gusto mo or yung mga kakailanganin mo talaga. When you put it there sa cabinet na naman, so, it is, uh, mas matagal mo siyang i-access, right? Compared pag nandiyan sa sa desk. So, that is the representation of a cache memory. So, more cache memory typically means faster processing. Kasi yung mga usually ginagamit mo, nakikita. So, for example, di ba yung sa cache sa browser mo? Di ba yung mga previously mo na mga na-open are stored in the cache. So that when you open your browser, meron pa ding uh, memories or histories ng mga na-open. Usually, internal cache are built in into your CPU. Okay, we have the bus width, bus speed, and bandwidth. So, a bus is electric path over which data can travel. So, a bus. It is found inside the CPU and on the motherboard. Bus width is the number, is the number of bars in a bus over which data can travel. The wider the bus, the more data to be transferred at a time. So, di ba pag sa bus talaga um, yung physical na bus? Di ba pag maliit yung way? Uh, you can hardly move. So, pag malaki yung space, means that you can move faster also. It's also the concept of buses. Okay. So, here is an example. So, if it, it is an 8-bit bus, mas maliit lang yung data. Pag 16-bit bus, so, mas, mas marami siyang makikater. So, the bus width and speed determine throughput or bandwidth of the bus. The amount of data can be transferred by the bus in a given period of time. That is bus width. A wider bus can transfer more data at one time more than narrower bus. Okay, now let's go to the memory. So, our memory refers to the chip based storage located inside the system unit. So, ito yung sa system unit mo. Storage refers to the amount of long-term storage available to a computer. So, we have RAM, random access memory. Computer's main memory consists of chips arranged into circuit board code, a memory module which are plugged into the motherboard. Stores essential parts of the operating system, programs, and data the computer is currently using. So, ito siya. Balik tayo dito. Ito yung memory mo. RAM. Ito yung bakante. Okay. So, let's go back there. Okay. So, in the random access memory, all that you do, currently using, for example, nag-open ka ng Microsoft Word, nag-open ka ng browser, nag-open ka ng Microsoft Excel, ng PowerPoint, ganun, using uh, your computer, the one that holds down is the random access memory. So, the more na marami ang iyong ino-open, it is the task now of the RAM to take care of it nga. Dili siya magpilit-pilit. So, with that, taas po ang RAM dapat. So, the memory module contains memory chips. This one. This is a RAM. This one is a notebook for this is desktop. Mas, ta mas dako ang desktop. Okay. Okay, so memory is either volatile or non-volatile. So RAM contents are lost when a computer is shut off. So when you 
have work on a Microsoft Word and then na a burn out or the computer is turned off, all that you do are um, gone. So, mawawala yung lahat. Pero, there is what you call ROM or flash memory. These are non-volatile. So, for example, our USB flash drive. Isi save natin doon yung document. So, when we turn on our computer and then i-insert natin yung ating flash drive or flash memory, makikita pa rin natin yung, do yung ating uh, document. Okay, so RAM is random access memory. Or read-only memory pala. RAM is random access memory. ROM is read-only memory. This is measured in bytes just like there in our um, in our bits. So, or in our digital representation. These are measured in bytes. So, amount installed depends on the CPU and operating system being used. Most personal computers use SD-ROM, and this is for the non-volatile ROM under development, the M-ROM and the P-ROM. Okay, so imagine this is your memory. So each location in the memory has the address. So ito siya, meron siya mga addresses. Unique siya. Each location holds one byte. This one, computer system sets up and maintains directory tables to facilitate retrieval of data. So, yun yung mga address kung saan nakasave yung data, yun yung uh, i-facilitate or yun yung kumbaga kinukuhanan ng, ng data. Okay, so programs and blocks of data are almost always too big to fit in a single address. So, again... It is maliit lang siya, one byte lang per location. So, one data can hold, can be held by many um, memory addresses. Okay, ito siya. So, when we access it, we don't directly access the data. But, we are going to access it using the address. And then, if you know the address, you can get the data. Ganun. Okay, so registers are high-speed memory built into the CPU used to store data and intermediary results during the processing. This is the fastest type of memory. We have the random, a read-only memory is non-volatile chips located on the motherboard into which data or programs have been permanently stored, retrieved by the computer when needed, and being replaced with flash memory okay so flash memory is non-volatile memory chips that can be used for storage have begun to replace rom for storing system information now stores firmware for personal computers and other devices and this has built in into many types of devices media tablets mobile phones digital cameras for user storage so yung mga flash memory natin ito yun siya Okay, so um, it is said na when you process or when the processor presses different kinds of instructions, um, init siya. Um, it produces heat kasi nga it is electrical, di ba? Electric, electronic siya. It has chips. So para makool siya, kailangan natin ng cooling components. So, these are fans and heat sinks. So, fans, fans use on most personal computers to help cool the CPU and the system unit. So, heat is an ongoing problem for CPU and computer manufacturers. This can damage components and cooler chips run faster though. So, um, that's why um, prolonged using of our computers could also mean heat, so much heat. And so much heat can damage. So, uh, sometimes, kaya nga, pag gumagamit tayo ng computers, uh, mas mainam ko nandiyan tayo sa air condition room or wag mo siya ilapit sa mga cloth kasi 
uh, yung cloth, nagpo-produce din siya ng heat once uh, ano ng computer mo. And then, heat sinks, small components typically made out of aluminum with fins that help to dissipate heat. So, meron tayong mga fan na available din. Yung i-connect mo sa yung computer and then gagawa siya ng hangin. Um, it can be bought marami na din sa online. So, it can also help a bit on cooling. Sa so cooling systems, secret cooling systems, cool the computer with liquid-filled tubes. Immersion cooling is hardware is actually submerged into units filled with liquid cooling solution. Or notebook cooling stand cools the underside of a notebook computer. Ito yung sinasabi ko kanina. And other cooling methods such as ion pump cooling systems that are under till development. So ito yung mga cooling systems. So our desktop, desktop systems can use fans, heat sinks, and liquid cooling system. This is for the server. And ito yung kanina, USB, that you can buy and connect to your notebook or your laptop. Kasi notebooks have at least one internal fan. So para mas ma-help pa talaga siya, you can have this one. Okay, expansion slots. Okay, ano yung use ng expansion slots? So, expansion slots are a location in a motherboard into which expansion cards are inserted. So, pwede kasi na, for example, you have um, a memory. So, pwede mo siya um, add pa ng another memory kung gusto mo pa ng mas fast ang kanyang processing. Okay, so we have the expansion cards. A circuit board inserted into an expansion slot used to add additional functionality or attach a peripheral device. And express card modules designed to add additional functionality to your notebooks. Pag notebook siya. So these are the examples of expansion cards. Ito yun. For network. Okay. And there, this is the external port. Express card module. And this is for your PSB adapters. These are examples of expansion. So the bus is an electronic path within a computer over which data travels. Kagaya ng sinabi natin ganina, kanina. So located within the CPU and etch and to the motherboard, expansion bus connects the CPU to the peripheral, typically input and output devices. The memory bus connects CPU directly to your RAM, and the front side bus connects CPU to the chipset that connects the CPU to the rest of the bus architecture. So we have here the PCI and Express bus. PCI has been one of the most common types. PCI Express bus, which is extremely fast, has replaced the PCI bus. So universal serial bus. Or USB is extremely versatile, allows 127 different devices to connect to a computer via a single USB port. And we have also Firewire Bus developed by Apple. So this is for Apple devices. We have also ports and connectors. A connector on exterior of a computer system unit is a device which you can attach. These are the ports, power connector, firewall. Your monitor, the network, USB audio, and the HDMI. Others are this one, the Bluetooth. And here it is. Okay. So these are the ports for USB. Here is the HDMI. There is it. For monitors or we have projectors, it is HDMI. And we have the VGA for your monitor. And we have here the audio ports, uh, headphones, head headsets. And then we have here the field slot here. Empty slots that you can put on expansion cards. And then we have the power connector here. So here's the connectors. Do memorize them. Okay, here are the connectors. 
Portable computers have ports similar to desktop computers but of often not as many so yung mga nasa laptop meron siyang mga ports sa sides yung iba naman nandun sa likod but not as many as desktop so smartphones and mobile devices have more limited expansion capabilities so kadalasan pag sa ating compute sa ating cellphone um, meron tayong para sa SD, para sa charger, at meron din tayong for the memory. Okay. Pero meron naman tayo now for OTG, for the ano, um, mobile phones. Okay, here's for the notebook example. Ito siya. And ito yung sa mga mobile devices natin. Okay. We have also tablet docs used to help with tablet productivity. Some are just a stand. So, sino yung may tablets na ganito? Matanggal-tanggal siya. Some are, ito na siya. Na siyang keyboard and you can uh, remove this one. Okay. And we'll have a again. Okay, so for again, your pen and paper, I'll give you um, five minutes to answer. I mean, uh, two minutes, now three minutes. A quick quiz. Uh, I'll find mo na yung ano yung Uh, itong number 3, wait. Sana yun. Uh, kunin ko muli ang LM niya. For question 3, wait na. So, number 1, which type of the memory is erased when the power goes out? Is it A, room? B, RAM. C, flash memory. Second, true or false? Uh, okay, second. True or false? The CPU can also be called the motherboard. Again. True or false, the CPU can be also called the motherboard. Number three, an electronic path within a computer over which data travels is called, again, an electronic path within a computer over, again, an electronic path within a computer over which data travels is called blank. So this time, we will continue. So ito na yung last part ng chapter 2. So again, uh, prepare your pen and paper for the following question. Now let's go to the next part, which is discussing on how the CPU works. So again, CPU is called the Central Processing Unit. So it is just a small piece attached to our motherboard. It is consists of a variety of circuitry and components packaged together. Okay. It is a transistor, key element of our microprocessor. So, um, yung microprocessor natin meron transistors. It's made of semiconductor material that acts like a switch controlling the flow of electrons inside the chip. So, today's CPU contains hundreds of millions of transistors. But, you know, uh, in the history, noon, our CPUs are large. But as time goes by, it becomes small. Uh, it is stated in a more slow. The number of doubles about uh, 
CPUs today contain hundreds of millions of transistors, the number of doubles about every 18 months. So this is the Moore's Law. In 1965, Gordon Moore predicted that the number of transistors per square inch on chips had doubled every two years and that trend would continue. It means that noon, malaki pa siya, but now it becomes smaller. So as you can see, uh, more computers now are small but it has big um capacity in terms of memory and also in terms of its processor. Moore's law is still relevant today for processors as well as other components. So how does CPU works? So a CPU has components. So remember these components. Okay, we have arithmetic and logic unit. This is the ALU performs arithmetic involving integers and logical operations such as multiplication, division, subtraction, greater than, less than. Floating point unit. This is the performs the decimal arithmetic with numbers that is having points. Control units coordinate and controls activities within a CPU core. So our control unit acts as our traffic uh, controller which coordinates kung ano na yung mga available na mga resources. Okay. Prefetch unit attempts to retrieve data and instructions before they are needed for processing in order to avoid delays. So, noon, ang talagang uh, components lang ng CPU na known is this ALU and the CU. Okay, we have also the decode unit translates information instructions from the prefetch unit to so they are understood by the control unit ALU and FPU. And then we have here the registers and internal cache memory stores data and instructions needed by the CPU. And we have the bus interface unit allows core to communicate with other CPU components. So this is uh, the things in a CPU. So ito siya. This is the prefetch unit. This is the decode unit. This is our internal cache memory. This is our bus interface unit. These are our registers and this one. So all of these units work together for processing um, instructions and other um, um, processing needs for the computer that we are uh, we are having. Okay. The system clock and the machine cycle. Our system clock are a small coarse crystal on our motherboard. It holds our time. Timing mechanisms within the computer system that synchronizes the computer operations. What does it do? It sends out signal on a regular basis to all computer components. And each signal is a cycle. So one signal is a cycle. The number of cycles per second is measured in hertz. And one megahertz is one million ticks of system clock. So one megahertz. The system clock and the machine cycle. So many PC, many personal computer system clock runs at 200 megahertz. This means a computer can run at multiple or fraction of system clock speed. A CPU clock speed of 2 gigahertz means that a CPU clock ticks 10 times during each system clock tick. So during each CPU clock tick, one or more pieces of microcode are processed. So each tick is a process. No, pero pas pas kain na siya, we cannot uh, imagine it by our hand. So really, the one who makes computers are very genius. They're making things so fast. A CPU with a higher clock speed processes more instructions per second than a CPU with a lower CPU clock speed. So now let's go to 
the system clock and machine cycle. So a machine cycle is a series of operations involved in the clock execution of a single machine level instruction. It has four steps. Step one is fetch. The next instruction is fetched from the cache or the ROM. And then you have to decode it. The instructions are decoded into a form that ALU or FPU can understand. And then execution, the instructions are carried out. And we have here the storage, the data or results are stored in registers or RAM. For us to understand this fetch, decode, execute, and store, let us go back to the CPU. Okay, here. And how CPU works. So for example, we are going to add 2 and 3 and we will display the sum. So the one that will um, accept the 2, oh, uh, the 2 is this prefetch unit. So before that, I'm going to ask, how many machine cycles do you think will have 2 plus 3 at 2 plus 3 and displaying its sum will have? Okay, is it 2 cycles? Three cycles, four cycles, or one cycle? Okay, now let's know. The first one is when you encode two, the request or the instruction will be fetch from the ROM, okay, here. And then it will be decoded in the decode unit. So this decode unit will uh, make sure that it can be understood by the control unit. The control unit now acts as a traffic um, enforcer uh, if there are um, still processes that are not yet finished, it will be the one to control. And then after that, it will be the execution either in the arithmetic logic unit or in the floating point unit. And the result will be stored in the register so in the two it is fetch here and then it will decode here decoded and it will be processed here and then it will be stored here that's for one machine cycle and we have three fetch three decode it here execute here and then store for feature um solving and then the third cycle um, get the sum the operation to be used, which is addition, and then decode it so that our um, ELU or FE will understand FPU will understand it, and then store um uh, not get store but execute it meaning you're going to get the values from the register 2 and 3 and then you're going to um, store the results in the register that is third cycle and then for the fourth cycle you're get, going to get the instruction of displaying fetch and then decode it and then execute it here and fetch the answers from the register and show the display of 5 as the sum of 2 plus 3. So all in all, adding 2 and 3 and displaying the result has 4 machine cycles. The first one is fetching and decoding and storing 2. The second one is fetching, decoding, and storing three. And the fourth one is fetching the operation and then performing the operation by getting the numbers that are already stored in the registers and then uh, performing the operation of adding. And the fourth is um, Fetching the instruction of displaying it and then decoding it and performing the operation of displaying the sum. Okay, that's it. So 
when you are using computers, of course, you cannot observe all of those four machine cycles done um, in a long process, but it is so fast. Okay, so I hope you understand uh, the machines, how machine cycle is done. So it has four, again, it has four cycles, fetch, decode, execute, and store. I mean steps, it has four steps. Now let's go on how can we make computers faster and better for now and for the future. So diba sometimes you can do, you can say, uh, I want my computer more faster. Can What can I do with this? Should I buy a new one or can I do something about it? So for you to improve the performance of your system today, you could have adding more memory. So if you have still a memory slot, you can add the memory. You could also perform system maintenance. How? And install programs properly. So for example, in your cell phones, diba? Meron kayo mga programs na install or apps na in-install na hindi nyo naman ginagamit. So you can just delete it and install it. Remove unnecessary programs from the startup list. Consider placing large files not needed on the regular basis on external storage. So um, in your cell phones, um, mas better if sa SD card natin siya i-save other than using their internal memory. And, the, and then delete temporary files. So mga temporary files natin, i-delete natin siya. Okay, here. You can do a desktop cleanup. In cell phones, meron ding apps for desktop cleanup. So, you should also do error check and defrag the hard drive periodically. Scan for viruses and spyware continually. So, clean out dust once or twice a year. So, kailangan clean, clean up for your computers. Buy a larger or second hard drive. So, if meron pa siyang slots for your hard drive, you can do that. Or you can have a, a hard drive in which you can um, put some of your data. Upgrade your internet connection and upgrade your video graphics card if there are some slots. Okay. So strategies for making faster and better computers. Improve architecture. So uh, as you can see or as you can observe right now, uh, computers are getting faster and faster. Um, so you can remember, ito lang siya ngayon. Then, the next month, meron na namang bago. And the next month, meron na namang mas bago. So, uh, yung uh, hunger ng tao na gumawa ng mga uh, new generations or better computers is always there. So, improved architecture, it means that there is smaller components, mas small, which is faster bus speeds, multiple CPU cores, support for virtualization, and improved materials, which is flexible electronic components na hindi madali mag, mag hit. No? Kasi pag, the more na mag hit, the more na mas madali siyang masira. So, that's why they are using copper, high K, or graphene chip. So we have also pipelining. So allows multiple instructions to be processed at one time through pipes. We have also multi-processing and parallel processing. Use of multiple processes to speed up the processing. This one. Okay, here is without pipelining. So here is kanina, instruction one, decode one. It will do it straight. Okay, without pipelining, the instruction finishes an entire machine cycle before another instruction is started. But with pipelining, this is having the stages. A new instruction is started when the preceding instruction moves to the next stage of the pipeline. So this one. So instruction, fetch, to, decode here, and so on and so forth. So with pipelining, uh, the execution of a process is more faster. Okay. 
So what is the future trends of these hardwares? So we have nanotechnology, the science of creating tiny computers and components less than 100 nanometers in size. So mas maliit na siya. Carbon nanotubes used in many products of the day, nanofilters and nanosensors. Future applications may be built by working at individual atomic or molecular levels. This one. This is an example. But I have not used it yet at the moment. We have also here magic glass. MIT has developed nano-sized conical patterns and surface of glass to eliminate its reflective properties. So, mataas-taas na ito na mga technologies. Okay, we have also quantum computing applies the principles of quantum physics and quantum mechanics to computers. Utilizes atoms or nuclear working together as quantum bits. Qubits function simultaneously as computers, processor, and memory can represent more than two states and expected to be used for specialized applications such as encryption and code breaking. So we have also optical computing and silicon phonetics. Photonics pala. Uses light from laser beams for optical to perform digital computations. And optoelectronic computers use both optical and electronic components for this one. The silicon photonics, the process of making optical devices using silicon manufacturing techniques. And we have this Terascale computing, the ability to process 1 trillion floating point operations per second teraflops. So these applications are expected and is now um, starting to be created. We can see some of the um, um, computers, devices, which are actually starting to have this one. So we have also the 3D chips, contains transistors that are layered to cut down on surface area required. So this one. So here is the quiz again. Okay, here is the quiz. So number one, um, Optical computers use which of the following to transmit and process data? Is it liquid, light, or silicon? Again, optical computers use which of the computer use which of the following to transmit and process data? Is it A, liquid, B, light, C, silicon? True or false, if your computer is running slowly, adding more memory might speed it up. Again, true or false, if your computer is running slowly, slowly adding more memory might speed it up. Lastly, number three, a quantum bit is known as A and next, a quantum bit is known as or at okay, thank you so much Miss Lani for the uh, pre-recorded video okay. so it's already 9 so thank you so much for uh, attending this class and you may submit it now I already uh, posted on the canvas now, if you have questions, because I still have class at 9, so if you have questions, just uh, do it on the canvas or over the channel. So again, uh, on Monday, we'll have our first chapter quiz. Thank you so much, and have a good day. And don't forget forget to thumbs up, na? Thumbs up this video. Thumbs up, please. So bye for now. See you on Monday, and study tayo, ha? Bye-bye. Yes, I will uh, also include the FB frame. Mamaya. No. Tao -tao, ako, i, uh, ano siya. Yes, good
morning, good morning, and welcome to my ITE 1 to 2 class. And for my two sections, please say present as well as your section para dili ko maglisod sa pag-attendance. Okay? Say present for section A and B. So, I'm sorry, Kwan, dahil, no? Wala na ako. Change up, yeah. Ah, wait, wait. Change up po na, mali, mali. Kasi yung, ano, 